Tonight, Twitter's adding video in a whole new way. YouTube launches its streaming music service, and Lollipop rolls out to Nexus devices. Tech News Tonight starts now. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 214 for Wednesday, November 12th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Well, happy Twitter Analyst Day call, everybody. This is a day when Twitter announced quite a few things. We will cover a couple of them now. One is called Instant Timeline, which is designed to give new users a feed full of interesting content, even if they haven't followed anyone yet. This is an, in an effort to retain people who sign up to Twitter and then say, what am I doing? I don't know what this is all about. The company also announced a new unfiltered feed with a new while you are away feature that shows the best tweets since you last logged in. Twitter CEO Dick Costolo said on the call that product changes would accelerate to make sure that everybody gets value out of Twitter immediately. The company is also focusing on serving its 500 million monthly unique logged out visitors and improving the 185 billion impressions per quarter on syndicated tweets shown in news articles and across the web. Twitter also says that it's bringing real-time video capture and editing to the Twitter platform. That means instead of opening up, say, Twitter-owned Vine, you could just hit record from within the Twitter app and post video from there. Yesterday, we talked with our guest, Jason Abruzzi's from Mashable, about YouTube's foray into music streaming seemed to be getting close. Well, today, the company confirmed that it will launch a paid subscription service that lets users stream high-quality ad-free music and music videos. Now, the service launches on Monday, and it's an invite-only bid at least to start, and will be called YouTube Music Key. It is actually your standard ad-based free model. Beta testers get six months of free access, followed by an invitation to sign up for a promotional price of $7.99 per month. Music Key also includes a subscription to what the company is now calling Google Play Music, which is Google's current streaming music service, which normally sells for $9.99 per month. Music Key will launch initially in the United States and sort of vaguely six European countries. YouTube is not talking about all that just yet, but the revenue shared will be among YouTube record labels and the artists. And anybody who wants to try Music Key can sign up for Google Play Music and get access to the beta immediately. The YouTube apps for Android and iOS will also be updated on Monday to include the new features. In less musical Google news, the company's ad serving tool DoubleClick for Publishers had a little two-hour meltdown earlier today, causing some blank spaces to appear in place of what would normally be advertisement spaces on a variety of websites, websites that you may read every day, I do anyway, which represents not only a huge loss of revenue for hundreds of publishers, but cost Google and publishers millions of dollars. But don't worry, ad lovers, all has since been restored. We know you love your display ads. In a major strategy change, Microsoft has announced it's giving developers new ways to use the .NET and Visual Studio to not only make Windows software, but also apps for Linux and Mac OS X, OS X, iOS, and Android. The .NET core server runtime and framework will be open sourced, and Microsoft will give developers the ability to use the .NET run runtime and framework to make server and cloud-based applications for Linux and Mac as well. Microsoft is also releasing a new full-featured version of Visual Studio 2013 that will be available at no cost to independent developers and students and small companies and others not making enterprise applications. All right, joining us now is Andrew Cunningham, Senior Product Specialist at Ars Technica. Hello, Andrew. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So I wanted to talk about lollipops with you today, specifically the kind of lollipop that rolled out to Nexus devices. Uh, <laughs> some of my coworkers who are very much in the Android uh, universe, I saw them tweeting uh, excitedly, furiously even, uh, earlier today <laughs> about this. So let, let's talk about the update. You know, for, for, for the folks who are actually getting the update, you know, how, how much of, of a big deal is this? Um, well, it's the it's the biggest Android update that they've released in a while. It's the first time that they've kind of comprehensively redesigned everything since um, since like 2011, I think. Ice Cream Sandwich was the last one that had such a comprehensive 
visual overhaul. Like they've changed the way that notifications work. They've changed the way that the quick settings work. Um, it's just, it's, it's a, it's an iOS seven style um, overhaul of mm -hmm. the way that everything looks and works, I think. And, and that's why people are so excited about it. Cause the last few have been, you know, they've introduced some cool new stuff, but it's been pretty low key. And um, it's, it's, they're the kind of features that were hard to show off to people. They didn't look as cool as some of the stuff in Lollipop does. So I think that's why people are, are flipping out about this one. For the folks flipping out, I mean, they, there are a lot of other folks saying, well, I, you know, it doesn't apply to me yet. There are a lot of Android devices that are not part of this update that are left out. At least, you know, this is the way that Android rolls out um, in, in waves to, to people on Android devices. So which devices are we talking about specifically? Um, the ones that are getting it right now are a handful of Google's Nexus devices, which are, um, they're technically, I guess, developer devices, but lots of enthusiasts really like them. And then also a couple of Motorola phones actually are starting to get it today. It's the uh, newest versions of the Moto X and the Moto G are starting to get it, which is um, kind of a departure. It's it's very rare for um, a non-Google company to be so quick with Android updates, so... Well, so if it's not that normal, what do you think is going on? Is it just a, you know, is, is this an effort on Google's part uh, because they know that there's a lot of frustration when somebody knows that there's a, there's a, there's a new version of software that, that, that eventually you'll get, but only a few devices get? Is, is the idea to roll out to more devices uh, sooner down the road? I mean, I know they're doing more things to encourage people to update faster. Like I know they're sharing um, Android code with their partners a little earlier than they used to. And what they're also doing is um, encouraging the OEMs, you know, Samsung, HTC, Motorola, to take the special apps that they stack on top of Android and to update them through the Google Play Store instead of through big Android updates. So since you have to touch fewer things to get an Android update out there, um, in theory, that's supposed to speed things up. And that's part of why Motorola is so quick, is that they are shipping Android with very, very little changed from what Google is, is shipping. So if you have like a Moto G or a Moto X, it's going to be pretty close to a Nexus device in terms of user interface and everything. It really seems like an industry-wide shift uh, to less big updates. Uh, you know, yes, yearly or, or, or twice yearly updates and more. Let's just roll out some fixes and some changes as they come through. Uh, so we, we have less of this going down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, Google knows that Android has this kind of fragmentation problem, and over the last couple of years, they've been um, they've been moving to this model where they don't drop a big monolithic update like every six months or every year. Um, now they're updating like Gmail and Chrome and um, a lot of other apps like through the Google Play Store. So even if you don't have the Lollipop update itself, the chances are pretty good that you have like Gmail or Google Drive or some other apps. Uh, starting to pull down updates with the with the new interface and, and some of the new changes that Google is making. Also, Google uh, released the standalone messenger app uh, for Android, which comes standard in Lollipop. Are there other versions that can download this? I would think you'd want as many Android users as possible to be using that version. Yeah, it's um, every phone that runs uh, version 4.1 or newer. So that's the first Jelly Bean version, as I, as I recall. <laughs> it's hard to keep all the desserts track keep track of all the desserts sometimes uh, what, what do you what do you what do you make of what do you make of lollipop you know we've we've had a, a few folks on the last few weeks talking about you know their 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 feelings in general you know it looks very different i understand that what do you think lollipop means for android and google and and you you compared it to sort of an ios 7 style update mm -hmm. you know at the time that was that was a pretty big des uh update at least on the design side mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, and I think you saw this in iOS too, is that over the years, you know, stuff kind of tends to pile up. Mm -hmm. And what happened in iOS and what was kind of happening in Android too, was that over the years, you get these design elements and things that, that look inconsistent and, you know, different features introduced at different times act differently, <laughs> depending on, you know, what the app is for and when it was last updated. So this is a chance for Google to, to totally rethink all of that stuff and, um, you know, make it all consistent, make it all intentional, and um, really challenge that idea that like Apple is the design company and Google is kind of the the cloud or like tech nerd company. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think that's 
pretty fair. <laughs> Andrew Cunningham <laughs> is the Senior Product Specialist at Ars Technica. Thanks so much for joining us. And before you go, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I write on arstechnica.com, and you can also follow me on Twitter at Andrew Writes, all one word. Excellent. Andrew Writes, as in writes. Yes. With a pencil. Yeah. If anybody has go. those anymore. Thanks so much, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. Coming up later in the show, Beats launches the first new headphones since Apple bought Beats, and you won't believe the password used by the FBI's most wanted cyber criminal. Seriously, you won't. But first, are you hiring? I hope so. Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? I hope so. Did you say ZipRecruiter? If so, then, well... You don't need me to tell you that. With ZipRecruiter, you can post to over 50 job sites all at once to find the best candidates. Posting the job is obviously a, a really important part of the process, but then you have to filter through all of the responses you receive. Somebody might look kind of good on paper that, and then you got a ton of other people and you got to narrow it down to the best candidates. And it can be kind of overwhelming because, again, you want to hire the right person and people for your job. At ZipRecruiter, you can view and download and print and share resumes with your colleagues, people who might have to work with this new employee. You can screen candidates the easy way by asking questions, real world questions, and, and, and be able to filter qualified candidates, you know, from people that aren't right for the job. You can post once and watch the qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. And you don't have to worry about a bunch of emails coming in or a, you know, a bunch of calls to your office that you can't deal with. You screen candidates, you rate them, and you hire the right person fast. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. Right now, viewers and listeners of TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. And we thank ZipRecruiter for the support of Tech News Tonight. On to a few more stories we're following in our tech feed. Today, Samsung unveiled a sneak preview of a new camera called Project Beyond, which is a 3D capturing 360-degree camera designed to capture videos and stream them on the Gear VR. The camera houses 16 full HD cameras and shows a 360-degree panoramic view and then captures everything in 3D, which collects a gigapixel of 3D data every second. It promises high-speed connectivity, adaptive stitching, ultra-wide-angle optics, and stereoscopic depth. So if you're excited, well, you better relax because the Beyond camera isn't going to be available to the public anytime soon. But Samsung does say that the content it's generating will be available to every Gear VR user immediately. You just can't shoot your own, I guess. Not yet, anyway. Samsung was busy today at its developer conference, which is going on this week. The company also announced the release of its Samsung Architecture for Multimodal Interactions Consumer Health SDK, also known as SAMI, and unveiled its SimBand Health Wearable device. Everybody's got a wearable. Everybody. Truly, my mother is next. Samsung will be releasing the SDK to developers today so they can start building apps that connect to the new platform and also run on the SimBand device. The SimBand device is wrapped with multiple biometric sensors for measuring heartbeats and blood CO2 levels. Big partners in healthcare include insurers like Aetna and Cigna, as well as provider network Humana. Samsung says it's also been working with Kaiser Permanente on ways to make data collected by the SimBand and the SAMI platform useful to physicians. Beats by Dre launched a brand new Bluetooth powered wireless version of the Solo 2 headset it introduced in June earlier this year for $299.95. The headphones go on sale this month at apple.com and select online retailers. Beats is also launching a new Royal Edition variant of their wired Solo 2, which includes new color options and a satin finish for $199.95. These are the first headphones since Apple officially closed its acquisition of the music hardware and software arm of Beats back in. In August. Finally, a story about a hacker and his cat. Back in 2012, the FBI arrested Jeremy Hammond, who was at the time one of the most wanted cyber criminals in the country. Now, back then, nobody knew how the FBI had managed to decrypt a hard drive that they had found at his home in Chicago that led to his arrest. Well, we now know. I'm going to give you a hint. Hammond had a cat named Chewy. Do you give up? Hammond's password was, wait for it, Chewy123. Just goes to show you that people 
pick really bad passwords, no matter who they are. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every day at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And don't you dare miss our morning news program. you got to have news in the morning and the afternoon. Come on, let's make it symmetrical. Tech News Today starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.